So what we're going to do here is open up the Kinko Servo Plus software. While you're in the software, you're going to go to the communication settings tab here. I already know the COM port for my servos on COM1. You don't have to change the baud rate or the COM ID. Those are going to be standard and default with the default drive. And press open to make sure these two green lights are lit. That means you have communication with the driver. What I have to do is open up the IO functions, go to the driver in the basic operation page. I'll open up the initialize save and reboot menu over here. Set everything up and I'm going to go straight into my motor settings. The motor settings, we're going to set these up outside of the control settings. The motor number here on line three, we're going to see it says K at, that's the default. Line one there says a couple of question marks. Uh, it's because there's no motor that's actually set up. The drive is probably flashing FF.F. We're going to set this motor to E5, save the motor parameters, and then reboot. When we reboot, the motor using is going to switch over to E5. So that motor is the motor number associated with the 120 volt, 200 watt servo that we're using. So the motor settings are saved. We're going to go to our IO functions and clear everything and set up something pretty simple. We're going to use the enable and we're going to change the operate operation mode over to speed control. Speed control with a minus three means that there's no respect to acceleration or deceleration. We're going to set a target speed, something low, 500 RPM. And I'm going to try to use uh, this simulate right here and see if I can't get the motor to run pretty smooth. As you can see, the speed reel is oscillating between 1,000, 50, 700, so it's not operating very smooth at all. To change that up, what we're going to do is go to the control modes and the auto tuning. This tuning method on line zero, when we change this to one and press enter, we lose control of the shaft of the motor. The motor will oscillate and try to tune itself to be a little bit more smooth. Uh, so I'm gonna press enter here, let the motor try to tune itself. I'm looking for the inertia get result line to be a positive one. If it's negative one, negative two, negative three, then it's not going to, uh, it's, it's not gonna be correct. The, the inertial values won't write themselves into the PI loop. As I attempted this a few times, uh, what I'm gonna do is go over to the position loop or the velocity loop here rather, and see what my KVP value is. I want these to be in Hertz, a little bit easier to understand in Hertz. And these need to be around triple digits, 100, 200. So something else is going on here. Go ahead and cut that out. We're gonna start back over from the motor settings. So as soon as we go to our motor settings tab, we're gonna delete the enable or the digital functions and go to enable. We're gonna change our operation mode into speed control. And we're gonna set a target speed, something simple, 250 is fine. The minus three operation mode is gonna mean that it doesn't have any respect to acceleration or deceleration. Uh, we can read on line three of basic operation, the speed it's running at is about 240, 260. So my PI loop could get a little bit tighter if necessary. I can go into my control modes, my auto tuning, when I press one and hit enter, I'm going to lose control of the shaft. It's going to tune, get a different stiffness and inertia ratio and an easy load value. And then when I run again on my simulate here, the motor is a bit quieter. It's a bit smoother. So that's what I'm looking for. Uh, what I can do is go into my control loops under my velocity loop and I can get rid of this KVI. I'm gonna change this to Hertz. It's a little bit easier to read in Hertz. Should be around 50, 150 if it's really tight. So I'm gonna make this a value of zero and I will increase the KVP if necessary. I'm gonna double check this to see if it was an integral issue. That would mean that I would have, a, have trouble stabilizing around a value. And I'm gonna increase the KVI by a value of one. And I'm not necessarily looking at the speed. I'm listening to the motor sounds here. The motor can be a bit more vibratory, a bit more uh, oscillate a bit more. So I'm gonna increase these by a value of one each time. And as I hit the enable and simulate this, I do check and make sure that I do have my hand on the enable in case that the, the motor gets violent because it could get pretty violent. If I change that to a value of five, most definitely it would be a pretty violent shake, but it does sound good and sounds a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. So we're gonna move forward from there. After setting up the tuning method, the rest of it's fairly, fairly simple. The basic operation setup is already done. Uh, so we're gonna put in an input to reset errors. And then this is just going to be a simple velocity index. We're gonna use all three of these velocity indexes, zero, one, and two. And then we're going to use an operation mode select. And we're gonna be able to swap between speed mode with respect to acceleration, deceleration, 
and speed mode without respect. So that would be three and minus three. So the operation mode there is going to be three. If I change this operation mode select simulation, you'll see that it goes to negative three. And when I change it back, it goes back to positive three. And that's with respect to lines 15 and 16 down there in the basic operation window. So now if I go over to these control modes, to the digital input speed mode, um, there's eight speeds here to choose from, speed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I'm going to leave speed 0 at 0, that way I can have it stopped without disabling so it can lock the rotor. I'll put speed 1 at 250, speed 2 will be 500, speed 3, 1000, speed 4, put this at, let's say, 1500, speed 5, we're going to go to 2000, speed 6, 2500, Speed 7 will do 3,000. Now these all use the same acceleration, deceleration, so those stay the same. It's the same profile, just different top end speeds. So when we go over here to our operation mode, uh, the velocity indexes work similarly to binary, so with all three of them off, that's like having 0, 0, 0. So that would be uh, the speed 0. Then the next uh, in the steps of binary would be 0, 0, 1, or uh, the velocity index zero would be a value of one. So that would be our 250 RPM. So for focusing on this speed reel here, this line three that exists on our basic operation and correlating it to the velocity mode there, when I, when I simulate DIN three, it's running at about 250 RPM. So as I move along in, in terms of binary, having 001 or 010, 011, as I'm moving up, so, so the first zero would be DIN 5, and then it's a 011 would be 0 at index 2, 1 at index 1, and 1 at index 0. And when I have 011 here, you'll see that it's at 1,000, or it's the third value. To get to other values, we can move up. There's 1,500 RPM. So that's 100, or 101 now would be 2,000 RPM, 110, 2,500, and 111 is 3,000.